This is the story of the elevator. The first step gets on the elevator. A friend told me of a game when we were drunk. It was a way to visit a parallel universe. He said he read it in some website he found online when he was researching creepy stuff. It's super simple, Naoto, he said. You should try it out. As usual, even though he was a fan of the supernatural, he was always too chicken to do or go to the places that involved it. I didn't believe in ghosts or things like that, but Ty didn't actually say that this parallel universe involved ghosts. I was a science fiction nerd, and the possibility of maybe visiting a world where World War I didn't happen, or a different sets of animals existed, appealed to me. Even if the method was kind of absurd, it was summer break anyway, and there was nothing much to do except sweat and rain bongas. So I found myself in front of an old apartment building on a Wednesday afternoon. One of the requirements for the game is to have an elevator that can go at least 10 floors. And during that game, no one else can get on. Ty already researched for the best place to do it. And he told me that this apartment building was to be torn down soon and only had a couple tenants left. It was surprising that a building this old actually had an elevator and I hoped that it wouldn't break down on me. It was one of the hottest days of the summer and as with many places in Japan there is no central air. There was a high chance I could die if I was trapped. I went in and found the elevator. The second step, go to the fourth floor. I rolled my eyes, of course the first place to go would be the fourth floor. The number four, she, sounds like death. Superstitions were something I didn't give much mind to. I pressed the button and the shaft groaned as it began to ascend. The inside felt like it was at least 20 degrees hotter than what it was outside and I felt sweat began to collect on my brow. The elevator chimed as it finally hit its destination and the door slid open. The third step go to the second floor. The first half of the game was basically just going to different floors. I just hoped that no one would get on unless I have to start all over again. And I didn't know if I could last another round in this sauna. The fourth step, go to the sixth floor. Thankfully, I brought a sports drink with me. I took a swig and it made me feel somewhat cooler. When the doors opened this time, a wind of fresh air came in with it, and I sighed appreciatively. The fifth step, go to the second floor. So far, so good. No one has tried to come in, and after this next step, things are supposed to get interesting. The sixth step go to the tenth floor. Nothing felt different, except that I was feeling a lot cooler now. I realized that there was a feeling of wind in the closed shaft as it rose, and I wondered if this was part of the game. I got to the tenth floor with no issues. The seventh step, go to the fifth floor. Now, this was where the game would prove itself authentic. 
The directions that Ty gave me said that on this floor a young woman would get on the elevator. And since only older tenants remained in the apartment, there would be a low possibility of her being a coincidental bystander. I felt my heart rate speed up as I watched the lighted numbers on top of the doors drop down steadily. Not because of fear, but of excitement. As I passed the eighth floor, the lights inside the shaft gave out. I had a second of panic, imagining myself trapped in here, but the elevator was still moving. The doors had windows in which I could see out into the passing halls. I got closer to peer out to see if all of the building had their lights out. It was on the sixth floor when I saw a man's face pressed against the other side of the glass. I jumped back, the beaten figure of his face still vivid in my mind, even though I only saw it for a split second. I was startled again when the chime went off and the doors opened. The lights in the hallway were on while the elevator was still dark. There was no one waiting to get in, and I let the door close, a bit disappointed. But I decided to go through with the rest of the game, or at least go back up to check if the man I saw was a figure of my imagination or not. I reached out to push the next button for the game, when the light suddenly came back on. I looked around and my breath caught in my throat. A woman was standing in the shaft next to me. I managed to not yell out, but I did trip in my haste to back away. Even as I laid on the floor, she didn't so much as glance in my direction. I took a moment to collect myself and observed her. She seemed like a normal woman. She was wearing a simple light pink dress, and her straight hair reached to her shoulders. The hair acted as a curtain and I couldn't see her face, although at this point I wasn't sure if I wanted to. I looked down and noticed that she was carrying a clear plastic umbrella even though it hadn't rained in a month. As I pondered this, I noticed something else as well. The umbrella was covered in what looked like blood. It was still wet and dripping down the plastic. Then I noticed her white stockings were drenched in what red as well. At this point, I realized that this is the lady described in the game, and I slowly stood up. One of the rules was to not talk to the lady at all costs. Another was that if I wanted to bail, this was the last chance to do it. The eighth step, go to the first floor. I pressed the button labeled one, and just like how Ty described, the elevator went up instead of down. As we passed the sixth floor again, I peered out, but didn't see the man. There was a large blood splatter on the glass. I glanced nervously at the umbrella. On the site Ty found, it said that once you passed the ninth floor, it was pretty much guaranteed that you succeeded the ritual. There was a moment of hesitation when the light turned to the 8th floor, but by the time I considered getting off, we had already made it to the ninth, and soon the chime rang for the 10th floor. The doors opened. The ninth step. Confirmation. The first thing I noticed is that inside of the elevator was cold. There was air conditioning. Looking out in the hallway, I could see that the carpet was new, and that the wallpaper was clean. Something completely different from the rundown apartment I was supposed to be in. This already proved to me that we were in a parallel world. I felt a little bit of joy, but then I quickly remembered the lady beside me. 
I took a glance at her from the corner of my eye and saw that she was still standing in the same spot. I wanted to get out, but at the same time, I was scared of what could be out there. Ty had said there was a method to make sure I completed the game and that he would text it to me later just to make sure I wouldn't back out early. Although I was pretty sure I was where I was supposed to be, I slowly pulled out my phone, afraid to make any sudden movements at her presence. The first thing I noticed was that I still had a weak signal here. I pondered at that information while I pulled up the text that I had received from Ty a few minutes ago. It read, Okay, so here's the way to check if you're in the right place. Apparently, in that world, you were the only human in it. Have fun! I felt a chill go down my spine as I read. I knew somewhere in the back of my mind that the woman in the elevator with me wasn't human, but there was now evidence for it. Are you getting off? I froze. I hadn't realized that in the moment I took to read the message, the woman had moved. Her breathy voice was in my ear. I could feel the cloth of her dress rubbing against my arm and a wetness on my calf from her umbrella. I looked straight ahead, afraid to turn and see her face. Her black hair was in the corner of my vision, and I shuddered. Are you getting off? She asked again. Her breath smelled of flowers, an unexpected trait that stood out to me. It was a pleasant smell, but one that contracted harshly with the present situation and only managed to increase my fear. From down the hall, a door opened. I watched bated breath and rigid posture as a face came looming out of the room. I could feel the woman next to me breathing on my neck, and I could hear the frantic breathing of my own as I saw a neck emerge next, but a body never followed. The face made its way down the hall while the neck stretched longer and longer. It was a woman's face. She was prettily maked up, and her hair was tied in a bun but it was suspended five feet off the ground by a mass of flesh. As the neck stretched out longer, I felt a cold hand grab my own. The pink woman slowly led my hand to the buttons of the elevator, and I felt my finger push a button. I was still frozen on the spot as she got off the shaft, and she never turned around, and I could only watch the back of her black hair as she approached the neck woman. Hello, Michiko. How was purgatory? I heard the neck woman ask cheerily as the doors closed and the elevator began to descend. My mind was at a complete loss, and I didn't notice I had reached the ground floor until an old man cleared his throat. I jumped, and he looked at me strangely. Are you getting off? He asked and I scrambled out of there, remembering the woman. I didn't even check to see if I was in the right world or not as I ran home. Nothing happened to me afterwards, but I went to a temple just in case to get a cleansing. I didn't tell Ty or anyone else about what I saw that day, and I always try to use the stairs as much as possible. This isn't something I wanted to talk about because... I don't want people to copy what I have done, but I do want to raise awareness. Games or rituals that involve the supernatural are not something to be taken lightly. And I want everyone who are planning on doing anything to take a moment and weigh out the pros and cons. I don't know who that lady was, or if she saved me or not but I'm not going back to find out.
I spent my first week of 2020 in New York City. We booked a hotel in Manhattan and had explored for the first few days. I had heard of the elevator game and wanted to try it to see if it was true. We had booked the perfect hotel, old creepy and somewhat lonely. My husband is super skeptical, but it's not like he could have done it with me anyways. I know the rules. The night before we were scheduled to leave, I lied to my husband in saying that I was going downstairs to buy some snacks. It was almost 1 a.m. when I got onto the elevator from the 11th floor and went to the first floor. There, I became nervous. I was definitely alone, and the elevator was surrounded by mirrors. I hit the number 4 and swiped my room card and the door shut. I put my head down. I had long hair and put it over my face as best as I could. I sure hoped not one else would be taking the elevator at this time, or surely I'd scare the crap out of them. Once on the fourth floor, I pressed number two. The elevator let out that familiar ding, letting me know I was on the second floor. I pressed the number six and then the two once more. Once I was back at the second floor, I clicked the 10 and this ride up took forever. My heart beat so loud I could hear it in my ears. I had looked up to see what was taking so long as it literally seemed like it took five minutes to get there. The doors opened, exposing the 10th floor. I remember being so hesitant to press the number five. As this was on the floor that someone is supposed to join me on. The doors closed and I held my breath. The elevator came to a rough stop and the doors opened. I waited with my head down. I began to feel foolish standing alone in an elevator with my head down looking like the grudge. After a few moments of silence, I was both relieved and upset, realizing no one was getting in. As soon as I moved to click number one, I heard footsteps. I almost shrieked. I put my head back down and surely, someone walked in. I could have been hyperventilating because I could not contain myself. I knew it was a woman, because I could hear the click and clacks of her shoes. No man would make this much noise. She also smelled quite fruity. I couldn't see her as she proceeded to stand behind me to the right. For the longest time, we stood in that elevator with the doors opened. I realized I had to press number one. I was so afraid of letting those doors close. I grew the courage to press the button and remain by the front so that there was no way of me seeing her. I pressed the button several times, but the doors wouldn't shut. After a million years, they finally cooperated and closed ever so slightly. Out of nowhere, I heard it say, what floor? It was a sweet voice. At first it comforted me, but I didn't reply. It asked me again, what floor? This time, a little more firmly. I continued to ignore it and it grew angry. Hey, I know you. It once said, which freaked me out. As it talked, its voice would fluctuate between high and low. It reminded me of Dory from Finding Nemo. I felt like she was trying to be playful, but in reality was just creepy. When it talked, it let out a sweet, almost flirty voice. But when I wouldn't talk, it would pant and it grew louder. Our elevator ride took forever. I stood in place, bracing myself, 
feeling like it was going to pounce on me at any moment. When it noticed I wasn't going to reply, it started moving. I could see its silhouette from my peripherals as it paced. It began to scratch the mirrors with his nails or claws or whatever it had. That's when I noticed the elevator wasn't going to the first floor. It was going up. It noticed that I noticed and it asked, Where are you going? It began to get louder or closer. I, I couldn't decipher how far it was she was. It asked me that like five times before it started asking me the same question, but backwards. Going you are where? Going you are where? The hairs on the back of my neck stood up. I just wanted this to be over. I closed my eyes and shortly after that I began to smell whatever it was. It smelled like vomit and I wondered if I was about to puke. The elevator flew through the floors like crazy. I remember wondering what, how many floors were even in this building. At last, the elevator dinged and the doors opened. I stared at the dark hallway. I stepped out, keeping my head straight as I wasn't sure if the thing was still behind me or not. I walked down the dark hallway, trying to make sense of where I was. Then I heard people chanting, or what sounded like chanting. As I walked, it grew louder, and it didn't sound like chants anymore, but it, like people suffering and wailing. I remember rubbing my arms of goosebumps. I grew progressively more and more scared as I walked further. Knowing that I couldn't look back was killing me. Kind of like feeling like someone was watching you. And I knew she or it was watching. At the end of the hallway was something that looked like an open window. Light was shining through it. And to be honest with you, I've read about the elevator game, but I couldn't remember what or how to end it. I kept walking like an idiot, hoping I'd get to the window soon. And then I heard waves crashing. I stopped and wondered how this was possible. A breeze hit me. I closed my eyes and tried to convince myself I was at a beach. I stood there with my eyes closed trying to settle down until I heard footsteps running behind me, towards me. I looked back and I saw a small woman, fragile looking. She was standing in place but I could still hear the footsteps. As soon as I made eye contact with her, she smiled, cocked her head unnaturally, and started sprinting towards me. Her feet hit the ground in accordance to the footsteps that surrounded me. I began to run. Have you ever had a dream where you were trying to run and no matter how hard you try, you were moving incredibly slow? This was just like that. As I ran, I noticed the elevator at the end of the hall. This was it. I knew these next few moments were going to be absolutely horrible. I grunted and ran for what seemed like hours. I gave up twice before getting to the elevator. But she never caught me. I nearly jumped into the elevator and turned to close the doors. As expected, they wouldn't shut. Before getting to the elevator, the woman stopped running and stood in the hallway, staring at me. I looked down, but could see her silhouette. This was BS. She wasn't supposed to follow me out of the elevator, right? The elevator dinged and the doors began to close. Feeling safe, I took one last look at her, and she raised her hand and waved me off like a queen would do to her people. I couldn't help but feel like she was taunting me. I stood in the elevator, panting like an animal. I was so happy when I made it down to the lobby. 
it was nice to see normal people again. When I got back to my room, my husband was there with hotel security. Apparently, I had been gone for four hours. I lied and told them I went to the bar for some drinks. As hotel security went away, my husband asked me what the real reason was, and obviously I told him. But he, like a lot of you, did not believe me. Only thing I will say is, do not play this game. Hey everyone, Dismal Hero here, and I'd like to thank you for checking out the video. Please subscribe if you haven't already, like and share the video if you enjoyed it. I'm always looking for new and exciting stories, so if you have a scary encounter that has happened to you, please email it to me in the link in my description. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you back here again next time.